Um, I have a question that's, that's deeply personal for you. I wanted to ask you, was there ever a moment in comics when you thought, this isn't going to work out? This is something that, like, you know, maybe comics isn't for me. Maybe I'm not going to be able to continue creating comics or, or working in comics. Was there ever a moment you were like, I'm done. Hang up the, hang up the, the, the pencil and the paper and that's it. What a great question. <laughs> um, I, the answer is, is complex. And if you're okay with that, I'll give it to of you. Of course. All right. It's 30 years ago. Okay. I'm in New York City. And two events. There's a, there's a massive blizzard in uh, New York in December of 84. And it dumps an enormous amount of snow in the city. And what is a 15-minute walk becomes an hour and a half through chest, through chest high drifts. And the weather begins to affect me negatively. I'm about your age. Okay. And I have an epiphany within a couple of months when I realize that I have no prospects, that I'm 34 years old, that I may a journeyman comic book artist who's just produced the most critically successful product I've ever done to no particular commercial effect. And the material had, had achieved some interest in Hollywood. And I had that combined with having equity in my apartment. This is one of these really pragmatic answers, okay? It, it, you'll see where I'm going when I'm finished, trust me. I moved to California with the intention of attempting to get into the movie business solely because I feared that I would get this old and that I would be a drain on the system, that I would be forced to live on Social Security, that I had no prospects, because I could see the handwriting on the wall. I'm not a star. I'm not a commercially viable impulse. I'm not, I'm not a guy who's going to be given Superman for a 50-year should run. I'm not going to do Batman. I don't care about these things enough. And the audience, that shared sensibility between talent and audience is an imperative. Okay? So I, came to, I moved to California. Here I am. I moved to Southern California to get into the movie business and stumbled into television. And television saved my life until it didn't. I have the life that I have today because of working for 15 years on television shows that I would never watch. Dreadful television shows that were exactly the sort of work that my CV and resume generated for me back in the late 80s and early 90s. Because in those days, there was still an old guard that couldn't really see what could be done by someone like me. Okay? Today, if I were 40 with my CV, I'd have a seven-figure development deal at a studio. Mm -hmm. I have no doubt. But I'm old, and people don't hire old people to, to do these sort of things. Trust me. In that sense, no matter what I did in television, I never burned bridges. I never told anybody to take a, take a hike. Mm -hmm. I maintained my relationships. I'm, I am perceived by, the, by, by comic book fans and enthusiasts as difficult, as controversial. Mm -hmm. I am extremely well-liked in the context of editorial. This may come as a surprise to you. Not it's quite all. true. No. You know, I am, I am a, I'm a guy that, I, I mean, when I go to Marvel to visit, I am more than welcome to visit, despite the fact that I based out of the company. The same thing at Marvel, at DC, rather. You know, I'm well-liked. You know, I'm, I'm difficult, but not professionally difficult, because I take very seriously that my time is as valuable as yours. Mm -hmm. Okay. So although I would have been perfectly happy to have had a television career that would have generated millions for me, I never burned bridges. And on the 6th of June of 2002, I was fired from my last television job. It was 9 o'clock in the morning in Toronto. 12 o'clock, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, it was noon, noon in, in Toronto, 9 a.m. here. My wife was still working at the time. She was an RN in Pasadena. And I got canned on a Friday. We just finished the first episode of a series. And it was an enormous relief. That's not how most people would describe getting a... Uh... It was... I'd, I'd, had, I'd had... The first half of my television career was one of the best years of my life. I was working for two guys, Danny Bilson and Paul DeMeo, hmm. and, I made, and I developed relationships and friendships that remain today. Yeah, they did the, uh, the Flash the Flash, they, 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 I, they did Rocketeer at Disney. Mm -hmm. um, they also did the Flash comic book over terrible, when... Terrible, <laughs> terrible. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't... I'm, I'm a huge Flash fan, and that was not... That was awful. Not a good uh, 13 it's, issue it, run. It, it's <laughs> um, sorry, guys. Uh, it just... One of them's dead. Sorry, you know. Um, but I just... I'd had... The second half of my career, I was working for people who I, I truly, truly despised who were anti-human and horrible. I mean, anecdotally, I was sitting at, uh, at Pearson in Toronto on a set the next day on Saturday, flying home. 
And I talked to my spiritual advisor, who's a really good friend, and, and a, a guy, you know, we'd gotten old together. <laughs> and um, I told him what happened. He said, I had to pray for them. This person got fired. And I will say something to you now that you may want to, uh, it, it isn't, well, it's, it's vulgar without being obscene. <laughs> I said that I pray that he gets ass cancer and a brain tumor, <laughs> and that, that it eats its way through his, through his fat English Jew body and meets with a shriveled turd that he uses for a heart. And my spiritual advisor paused for a moment and said, that will do for today. <laughs> and I came home, and I was, I was a bit gobsmacked, but not, not destroyed. And a month later, I came to New York, and um, I offered my services to DC Comics. And because I hadn't burned bridges, I was picked up again. But the business had changed. The model had changed dramatically, because I was not really available in the 90s. I didn't see the work. And I had lost whatever momentum my career might have had. On the other hand, had I continued to work through the 90s, it's possible my career would have ended in the early 90s, in, in the early aughts, just because I didn't do the sort of work that competes with the sort of stuff that got you into comics in the first place. <laughs> what got you into comics in the first place, I'm sure, was Rob Liefeld and Todd McFarlane and that sort of stuff. It was actually uh, Mark Wade and The Flash and How Jeff interesting. Johns. Really, I love that one. Yeah. Because Mark, Mark, Mark is one of the two most writer-friendly artists I've ever worked with. Mm -hmm. Mark, has a, Mark has an innate and intellectual understanding of the geography of the page and, and of the real estate of the page, which is enviable. Mm -hmm. And it's something he never gets any credit for. I love working on Mark Wade scripts. Oh, nice. I use Mark Wade's script um, as a, a teaching tool at Marvel and elsewhere. Oh, nice. Yeah. And he's, he's a comic book legend as well who's done you know everything in comics, and he's continued to, to grow and, and starting new ventures all and the time. And we disagree on almost everything. <laughs> But I think that's human nature. You know, little details is what makes us unique. And, and seeing, I think there's ways to disagree while still being respectful. And I think that's the the fine uh, the fine line. Look, I have I, I live in I live in Ventura, and Ventura is a very red town, in a blue state. <laughs> and I have breakfast with guys in the morning whose politics make my head explode. <laughs> but they're still friends, yeah. and I trust them explicitly. You know, so because that that's that's what makes for for human complexity.